Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the X79 UD5. It features the X79 chipset as well as the 2011 socket for Intel's new Sandy Bridge E line of processors. So here's a close-up look at the box and if I may digress for just a moment, I wanted to show a quick comparison here. This is a Gigabyte Z68 motherboard and uh, motherboard manufacturers have this problem where they have a lot of technology integrated into their motherboards and they have to do their best to present it to the good folks out there who might be purchasing them. But I wanted to give uh, a big thumbs up here because look how clean this box looks by comparison. It, it look, has a nice clean layout. Anyway, I'm, uh, I probably look at too many motherboard boxes myself personally, but just wanted to point that out. Let's uh, talk about some of those features that are included, and with the UD5, you do get a five-year warranty for the United States and Canada for this motherboard. You get Gigabyte's 3D power, which is patent pen pending. It has three-way digital engine to provide power to both the CPU and both banks of memory slots. You also get Gigabyte's 3D BIOS, and I'll show you the picture of that on the back. It's pretty cool. Uh, of course, you get the aforementioned X79 chipset and all of the features that it brings to the table. You get PCI Gen 3. This is fully designed for and capable of supporting that uh, PCI Gen 3 uh, video cards. Of course, none of those are currently available on the market, so 2012 we will be seeing a lot more of those. You get 4-channel DDR3 memory. Uh, again, that's one of the features of X79 as well as the Sandy Bridge E processors and the internal memory controller. And you get integrated Bluetooth 4.0 and a Wi-Fi card that's uh, included, so you can go wireless right from the get-go. Uh, a few other items to point out here is a little bit more information on that 3D power. Uh, you get two separate digital power engines delivering power to your memory, as well as a dedicated one for your CPU. Uh, that essentially is going to give you better compatibility, better st stability, uh, more granular, su granular support over the power that's delivered to your CPU. So particularly if you're going to be doing overclocking, um, it's going to give you some additional help in that area. Uh, the 3D BIOS function that I mentioned is an actual 3D representation of your motherboard. And you can see it sort of in this little picture right here. But uh, the UEFI BIOS will allow you to use your mouse uh, as well as your keyboard in the BIOS. And you can actually use your mouse to hover over different parts on the motherboard. So if, for example, you want to adjust your serial ATA settings, you can hover over those serial ATA ports, click on that, and it'll bring you right to that feature. So nice intuitive method to get into your uh, BIOS settings. Uh, you've also got the Gigabyte Ultra Durable 3, uh, twice the copper PCB, so uh, just to provide uh, additional, um, or I should say enhanced um, communication between all the devices, more stability, more durability over time uh, with the additional copper. You get three-way SLI and Crossfire support, so you can go with a three-card setup using this motherboard. Uh, you also get some high-definition sound, 110 decibel signal-to-noise uh, ratio sound with uh, Blu-ray support integrated. You get a dual BIOS, so you can actually uh, set up one BIOS so you have a backup if you're, for instance, flashing and uh, you, you, you run into a terrible power failure or something along those lines. Uh, you get the 4-channel DDR3. Uh, you get on-off charge function with the red USB ports. It also provides additional power to charge your USB devices more quickly. And now, let's move on to the motherboard and accessories. So here is the what comes in the box. And uh, of course, you will get a motherboard in here. We're gonna set that aside and come back to it. Let's talk about accessories for starters. We have a Gigabyte GAX79 UD5 motherboard manual. Keep that on hand while you're doing your build. Lots of important information in there. You also get uh, a Wi-Fi utility disk as well as your X79 series driver and utility CD. So this will have your drivers for the motherboard. Uh, very important to keep that on hand. But if you are, have done your installation, it's usually best to go to the Gigabyte website, download the latest drivers for the most compatibility and performance. These are Wi-Fi antennas, and you'll notice there are two of them. They have cables that connect to this, which is a Wi-Fi card, a little riser card that you can plug in which they include in the package here. So Wi-Fi, right from the get-go. Fits in a PCI slot, has two connectors there for your antenna. Also has a USB port added on there, as well as a little USB adapter. And there's your Wi-Fi card in what looks to be a mini PCIe slot. Moving right along, we have a couple bridges here. Uh, we get a crossfire, two-way crossfire bridge and a two-way SLI bridge, so if you're doing uh, an AMD video card or an NVIDIA video card solution, you can use either of those. 
for your respective cards. Uh, you get some more information here about the Wi-Fi uh, hardware that's included. You get a multilingual installation guidebook. If English is not your first language, you can use that in coordination with the first book that I showed you. You get a little gigabyte badge for your case. You get a Dolby Home Theater badge for your case. You get a uh, USB header extension, and that is, uh, again, to plug into that Wi-Fi card. You get some serial ATA cables, compatible with serial ATA or Vision 1, 2, or 3. Uh, these are four total serial ATA cables. Two of them have L brackets on one end. You get a rigid PCB three-way SLI bridge there. So if you're going with a three-way solution for video cards from NVIDIA, you can use that three-way SLI bridge. If you're purchasing an AMD ATI card, uh, you usually get additional Crossfire X bridges along with those cards in there. Here's another little accessory. It is a USB 3.0 uh, front panel adapter. So you can put it in a 3.5 inch front panel on your case, route that over via this little 20 pin USB 3.0 header, plug that into your motherboard, and that will give you a couple more USB 3.0 ports on the front of your case. Screws, of course, to mount that properly. And lastly, an input-output shield for the back of your case uh, that has clearly labeled all of the inputs and outputs for the motherboard. And there's a look at the X79 UD5 itself. We have a black PCB in the background there. We have mostly black and gray uh, coloration throughout for most of your ports, and you got some blue on the heat sinks there as well. Taking a look at our uh, system fan headers as well as CPU fan headers, we have five of them total. CPU fan is right up here at the top. We also have a 4-pin PWM fan header right over here. We have another 4-pin PWM fan header right here. Uh, we have a 3-pin fan header down here in the bottom right. We've got another 4-pin, I'm sorry, another 3-pin right here on the lower left. And that rounds it out for our fan headers. Uh, let's talk about some more specific close-up items on the board here. And we'll start in the bottom right. Next to that 3-pin fan header, there is a reset switch. Power switch up top is too, but I'll get to that. Uh, we have our front panel uh, connectors right there. They're in this color-coded little uh, box there that will help you more clearly see which fan or which front panel headers go in which uh, uh, pins. We have uh, USB 2.0 outputs right here. These are USB 2 out uh, or headers that you can plug into your uh, case front panel or rear panel. Uh, you've got a red background one right there, and that means it will be the always-on additional power USB port so you can plug that in if you want to charge devices and also um, when the when the computer is plugged in but not on you will still have power out of that to charge. A couple more USB 2.0 headers next to that. We have a trusted platform module header right there. There's that system fan header again. We have a firewire header right there, the 1394 under that bracket and your front panel audio right there which is compatible with uh, AC97 or HD audio. Also got a little SPDIF out right there. Uh, above, we have our PCI Express area. And uh, as, uh, as previously mentioned, you can set up two-way or three-way SLI or Crossfire X using these full-length 16X PCIe slots. For the full-length slots, we have a 16X slot up here at the top and another 16X slot down here at the bottom. The one in between is wired for X8. If you use two of these slots, you can go 16, 16, and 8. If you're going to do a three-way Crossfire X or SLI setup, they'll all default to X8. Also to mention, uh, since you have the top and bottom one here that are the full speed, 16 speed slots, uh, if you are doing two-way, you will have a nice big gap in between your video cards there that will allow you to get a little bit of extra cooling, particular for your upper card, uh, as well as actually make use of some of these PCI slots in between those cards. Uh, we have a couple PCI Express X1 slots in between those, and then finally a legacy PCI slot down here at the bottom. Moving over here to the right, we have this gray and blue heat sink here, and that is over the X79 chipset. Uh, it's got a heat pipe coming out of the top right here, which routes up to the VRM area, which I'll show you more of in just a moment. X79 chipset controls quite a few things on this motherboard, but uh, of note is the serial ATA ports right here. So these six serial ATA ports on the right are all controlled by the X79 chipset. The black ones here are SATA revision 2, 3 gigabit per second. Two white ones are SATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. And uh, if you're plugging in, say, an SSD for your operating system, 
those uh, native six gig per second ports are going to be the ones you want to plug into. Th these will be the fastest performing ports on this board. You do get some additional SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second ports. Those are over here on the left, the gray ones. Those are controlled by a uh, couple Marvel add-on chips, Marvel 88 SE 9172 chips that are added on. You can get SATA Revision 3 6 gigabit per second speeds out of that. It will be just a notch or two slower than the native ones for the white ones over here. So use those for supplemental storage. They are compatible with RAID 0 and RAID 1. Moving along the side of the motherboard here, we have a USB 3.0 20-pin header. You can use that with the included bracket. Uh, you have a, your 24-pin main motherboard power connector. There's that system fan header that I mentioned before. And over here, we have a surface-mounted power switch. So if you're doing an external build or if you don't have your front panels connected, you can use that to easily turn the computer on or off. Let us continue along up to our CPU socket area, which is the dominant feature in these LGA 2011 boards. There's your LGA 2011 socket right there in the middle. It uses a universal CPU bracket. So for most aftermarket CPU solutions, uh, CPU coolers, I should say, you can mount them directly to the socket without too much trouble and no need to actually install a back plate. So for instance, the, uh, the water cooling unit that is available for Sandy Bridge E processors just mounts directly to that. No need to worry about a back plate. Up here you can see the digital VRM area, and that's providing power to the uh, CPU socket as well as the memory. You've got an additional uh, heat sink right there above that, and that has that heat pipe I was mentioning, which runs right down here the si next to the, uh, the DIMMs and down to the, the heat spreader for your X79 chipset. So uh, that will give you adequate cooling between um, the two heat generating areas of the motherboard. You do get a full eight DIMM slots here, and those are compatible with DDR3 memory. You can get overclock memory speeds running up to 2133 megahertz. Uh, it supports non-ECC memory modules. Uh, if you're going to go with eight gigabyte DIMMs, you can do up to 64 gigabytes of memory in this motherboard. Now bear in mind, you've got a quad channel controller here that's integrated in your Sandy Bridge E processor. So you need to have at least four DIMMs, and you need to put them in matching slots, so refer to your motherboard manual for that. In order to enable that quad channel memory, it is capable of running it uh, single channel, dual channel, or in most cases, triple channel as well. But uh, for max performance, you're going to want to actually get four DIMMs at a time, so you can either set up four DIMMs or eight DIMMs. Uh, again, 64 gigs capable with eight gig DIMMs, or if you want to go with more affordable four gig DIMMs, you can still get up to 32 gigabytes of memory installed into this motherboard, which is a lot of memory. You might want to consider a RAM disk setup. Uh, up here at the top, we have our supplemental CPU power connector. It is a, an 8-pin CPU power connector, for, uh, particularly for overclocking, to provide extra juice to your processor. And rounding things out here at the back, we have our inputs and outputs. Uh, the red USB ports that you see here are those always-on uh, additional power uh, USB ports, and those uh, will allow you to charge devices more quickly, also charge devices while the computer is off but still plugged in. You get a PS2 port here, combo port for a mouse or keyboard. You get an external overclock button mounted right here to this little riser, so you can push that for a simple one button overclock. This board does feature that dual BIOS, so you can use this button here to switch back and forth between those two BIOS BIOSes. Uh, and easily jump back and forth if you want to do, say, for instance, overclock settings on one and just switch back and forth between those, or to give you a little bit of extra peace of mind if you're flashing your BIOS, because if you do have a failure when you're flashing, you can switch to the other one and still boot the board up. You get a clear CMOS button right below that. You get a FireWire port, the yellow one right up there. Uh, a few more USB 2.0 ports, the red one's right here. A couple more uh, SATA ports here. These are eSATA ports, uh, again controlled by a Marvell controller. They are SATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit per second. The one on the left here is actually a combo port USB eSATA, so you can actually plug in a USB device right there, or if you're using eSATA, you can actually plug that in and have power as well as your data connection. You get a couple USB 3.0 ports right here. You get an RJ45 port there for gigabit ethernet couple more USB 2.0 ports there, and then finally your high definition audio right there, which you have an optical toss link out that you can uh, plug in for high definition audio, or you can use your analog connections here uh, via the 
eighth inch jacks, and that is compatible with uh, 5.1 and 7.1 surround sound. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Gigabyte X79 UD5 motherboard featuring the X79 chipset and the 2011 socket for Intel Sandy Bridge E processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.